Greetings, greetings. Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Wow. Um, it's, it's so amazing to go live and realize that you are connected with so many people in life. Not only with Facebook, but we are connected in many ways. Um, hi, Mark. How are you? Uh, so good to have you here. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Lisa Bubari, and uh, your favorite clinical hypnotherapist, stress management consultant. Today, we are going live because it is Tuesday. It is Heal Talk Tuesdays. And believe it or not, hi, Mark. Good afternoon to you as well. Today's message, I wanted to talk about um, the intentions we set in our life. Hello, Claudia. The intentions that we set in, li in life and what is happening with you. What is going on um, in life today with all the fears that it's happening around the world with this coronavirus? I want to know, has it affected you? and what precautions are you taking to safeguard yourself thank you claudia um thank you thank you for all the hearts and the kisses um so my question is to you what are you doing for this coronavirus and are you afraid to go out are you afraid to do anything um you know so many are in fear and there are those who take life uh, as it comes and they continue doing what they are doing. They are cautious, but not in fear mode. So what exactly is fear? Fear, I'd like to share with you that some fears are so real and fears in a way are something to help us be cautious, for us to uh, take a cord, be aware, and there's fears that truly stop us from living. So I had a, a group meeting last night and as they came, they walked in, I had the hand sanitizer. I've always had a hand sanitizer and uh, um, I used to have it in the group room where the kids come because I have this nonprofit and we have children coming when we do workshops and everything. And I used to have the sanitizer there. I brought it and put the sanitizer in the reception area. Yesterday when one of the ladies walked in, she just came and automatically sanitized her hand. And she says, oh, this is the first time I notice it here. Well, you know, it, it's such a small little thing that we can do as precautionary as saying thank you and I care for you, customer, and here's a hand sanitizer. We all, of course, we have a bathroom for them to go and wash their hands, but instead of them doing something, I'm saying, I think I am thinking of you and here it is, I have this. And I had this big, huge bottle. Anyhow, so, did you know that? Yes, I was just about to say, Adrian, washing hands with, hope, uh, with soap, really scrubbing, like Dr. Oz said, if you wash your hands with soap as if you are a surgeon and you're scrubbing to go into surgery, that's going to be good enough. Um, so in a way, you can do all the things you need to to safeguard yourself. But when it comes to fear, to be afraid to go out, that's right, Mark, wash your hands with soap and that's all you need. Even if you have rubbing alcohol or rubbing alcohol patches, that's good for you as well. And you can do it not only on your hands, but bring it all the way to your wrists and wash it all the way to your wrists. I'm a hugger, I hug my clients. And when my clients walk in, they hug me. It hasn't stopped this. 
I am more cautious of who I hug, but I don't stop living my life and the connection that I have with the people that I love. And so that's one point. And fear when it is real, um, yes, they're closing a lot of places, they're doing a lot of things, but for you to also know fear in itself as negativity, it's, it's feeding negativity, it's feeding that uh, negative energy. And when we feed ourselves negative energy and when you uh, close the doors and stay home, what you're saying is not only I'm safeguarding myself, but I am afraid to live my life, to go outside, to do things. So if you have children, be aware that your actions and your reactions is affecting them too. Hello, Elijah. Hi, Jerry. Um, so children look up to us. They look at every movement that we make. And if it was not this virus, if it was something else, I want you to know that you are their model. They look at everything that you say. As a matter of fact, if you are speaking to your children in fear base, then you get to instill in them fears especially in words, because not only in actions, but children hear things and you can say something and they go playing, but the words still remain in their thoughts and in their mind, no matter what they do. So our language, your language with your child, your language with your loved ones can impact them more than what you believe, especially if you are watching the news at night and going to sleep with all this um, horror stories. I'm not saying negate them, but when you watch it at 11 o'clock and you tune it out, believe it or not, this mind of yours has not tuned it out yet. So it takes a while for you to let it sift. And if you're not listening to classical music or any music, if you are not having conversations, more loving conversations or reading something before you sleep or listening to a guided meditation or any kind of an empowerment or Zen music before you sleep, then that's the last thing that stays with you when you go to sleep. And believe it or not, your subconscious mind will get to replay everything, especially the last things that goes to, to sleep with. So I want you to become more conscious and aware of what you sleep with or through each night. Hi, said Ajahn, how are you? Now, I had a client, and this is a real case. I mean, of course, all my clients are real case. Uh, came here uh, yesterday, and uh, he's been going through some fears and anxieties. And I want to know if you have ever experienced this. Long ago, he had... Um, his child was uh, standing in the corner as he went to pick up his children. One of the children, not his child, but one of the children ran and to come and greet his son and a car almost hit that child. So there was a big screaming and precaution. The car stopped, the child was fine, his child was fine. But you know what it did? It sent this fear and anxiety what if it was my child? And we do this. We all do this. When we are scared for our loved ones, we get scared. So by you getting scared, 
that fear gets instilled in your body, in your muscles, in every nerve within you. And believe it or not, sometime later it comes to play out. So the body remembers that fear. And it doesn't matter if it is rational or irrational. It thinks of it as real, the same way as what is happening now. It may be real, it may not be real. It is real and it is reality in many places. But because of all the things that you may put inside, even if it is not real, you are making it real. So by that precautionary thing, he started controlling and uh, making his child make sure that the child does not go out, make sure that the child does not do this. When they go out, it's like look around 10 times before you move forward. So instilling more fear in the child, even though it was his fear because the child does not even remember it. As children, we move forward in life. We go up on the trees, we fall down, we break things, we know it heals. We get cuts in our hand and uh, we put it in our mouth. So my question to you, what irrational fears you may be holding onto without realizing? Is there a fear that you may have ev uh, had from a long time ago, maybe from your childhood, maybe from your teenage years? The same thing is when children are afraid of dogs, I usually ask them, is your mom or dad afraid of dogs? And most times is the fear of the parent, one of the parents, that the child looks and the fear of the parent is like, don't go near the dog, don't do this. And so instilling that fear of the dog and the child grows up without ever being anywhere near a hostile dog or a barking dog, now the fear is in them. So do you realize we have more self-inflicted fears in our life or given to us, instilled in us without us ever feeling it? Hmm, what a concept, right? Hi, Jasmine. Hello, Anahid. Hi, Anna. So good to have you here. Thank you for being present. And that's what I wanted to share the message today and ask you if you have had fears. And if you've had fears, either real or irrational, here's some tools that will help you overcome fears. Here's one more thing. You know, I, I have a method. My method is the 3E method. The 3E method is evoking what was, which is the past, the reasons, the history of it. Because we don't live in the past, we live today in the reality. And if you are holding on to experiences of your childhood or past fears, then you are not giving yourself permission to move forward, right? Again, if you live in the past, in your history, and have that fear base from then, then you are not stepping, giving yourself permission to step forward, to live life fully and evolve. So evoking is finding out what those fears are. Um, and it doesn't matter again, real or unreal. False emotions appearing real is what I say that it is. And if it's in the past, how do we overcome that? Well, recognizing it happened long time ago. It is not today. And then saying these words, 
Is this true today? Is that fear still real or true? Is it still affecting you today? And if it is, how? Become so aware of it, so detailed of how is this fear affecting you today? Once you write down the effects of it, I want you to read through what is the fear? What am I afraid of? And how is this fear affecting me? Once you see the effects of it, read through it and say, is this true? Is this affecting me with whatever it is that I want to do? Yes, no, yes, no. And then once you eliminate all the no's, be clear of the yeses. What exactly am I afraid will happen if I hold on to this? Because sometimes there is a benefit in what we hold on to either physically, mentally, emotionally, or support ways, because as sometimes we say, if I am afraid, then someone is always watching over me, they want to take care of me, and either knowingly or unknowingly, that feels good. If I were to stand up, if I say my knee hurts or my leg hurts, if I stand up and I can't do it, I'm afraid to stand up because be clear of your because and then i want you to say and how uh, will i feel once i overcome this if i did not have this fear or this situation or this issue what would happen would you live your life? Would you step forward and begin walking? Would you feel better? Would you feel calmer? Would you feel more harmony inside and that peace? Because when where there is no fear, there is joy and harmony and calm. When there is no stress, there is calm and inner joy, inner peace. There's stress everywhere. But how we cope with it is knowing, okay, I'm stressed. Let's deal with it so that I can eliminate what was the root cause of it or the cause of the stress, recognizing it, eliminating it and saying, I move on. Next because you walk out, there might be stress. So it's not that there is lack of things to be afraid of or lack of things to be stressed about, but it's knowing within yourself, I can overcome this. I know the tools and the techniques to eliminate this one. And then when something else comes, now I have the tools to eliminate that one again just like if there is an inflammation even in your skin under the skin and if you don't tend to it it will create more inflammation and then the body you know what the body does the body is so amazing from all around the body brings it just goes in like a Pac-Man and says, every nerve, every muscle, every organ, come help me, come help me. There is a problem here. There is a bite or a cut or uh, there is a pain in here. The body is saying, I'm in pain. So, and then it gets all red. Why? Because from the moment it happens, it's taking blood from everywhere and bringing it. It's like all the soldiers come because we need help to fight this. Hmm. So all those soldiers come, blood comes flowing from everywhere to this one area. And then if you don't tend to this, it becomes infected 
and the infection is not on the surface it goes inside it goes lower than your skin deep right into the nerves so we open we open it and then we see the wound and sometimes it's gonna hurt like anything else it's going to hurt because you're going to squeeze that thing out it's squeezing it out it's cutting it out it's releasing it just like releasing fears releasing a lot of things once you release it it's going deeper cleaning it loving it cleansing it putting alcohol putting all the iodine and everything to heal it right and then we kiss it by doing that you're embracing you're loving you're cherishing once you do that then it begins to heal from skin deep deeper from inside because now all the soldiers all the nerves and the muscles every molecule every essence are now doing the work to heal because that hole it has to fill the hole so if it, the pus gets there again you release it one more time and the liquid comes out and the body knows ah i'm being loved I'm being tended to that's when the healing begins the embracing part of reality right here right now and soon you're gonna see that there is another layer of scar and the scab comes and then the healing begins that from red to blue to yellow and the next thing you know it's the color of your skin and when you shed your skin all that scar fades away and we don't even remember where it was and most times that's how we overcome certain pains either emotional and physical so here's that technique become aware of your fears and then write them down of how it is affecting you and then eliminate them if it is still true or you're just holding on to things that was instilled in you or you held on to it for whatever reason and then write all the benefits if it is still benefiting you once you become clear I bet you anything you'll see you have eliminated probably 60 to 70 percent and then you say how can I move on knowing this and I can also let it go because this technique will help you not only for yours but for your loved ones words matter when we speak we hear when you speak you're the first person who hears it we can be victimized but we do not have to remain a victim does that make sense if you have overcome something then you are a survivor you are no longer a victim you may have been victimized and that fear may be there but you have overcome certain elements of it maybe emotionally and mentally you need more help and i am here for you that's what i do i help you overcome things that you may not be able to so you can always text me at 818-221-22129 oh my god 2747 okay 2797 2797 i have not texted myself in such a long time that's why so 818-221-2797 you can always text me and i will get back to you any questions that you have anything that you want text me and i will respond to you the first 
chance I get. I am here to help you to live life more calmly, fear-free, stress-free, with more joy, with more harmony. My name is Lisa Bubari. I am here to help you thrive and live life fully. All the links and the phone number will be right there. You can just, just look below and you'll see the information. Thank you, Adrian, for remembering. I'm sure the number and links will be in the description. Yes, they will be in this description. Thank you for reminding me. I love it. I love my clients. I love you for reminding me what to say. And remember, evoke what was, embrace what is, and evolve to your heart's desire. You know what? Because sometimes, most times, not sometimes, most times, our wishes do come true. God bless you, and may the universal light be with you. Thank you.